finally, I find one. Look at this. I hit the fire salamander jackpot in that wood pile. Now this lets me show you the great variation in their markings. Look at this, we got stripes and spots. You can get them in solid lines, so many different patterns. Now right now, the fire salamanders are at the most active between March and June. Oops. And that's because of the springtime rains. This is when the females are out and about depositing their larvae in little streams. And the way these salamanders reproduce is very interesting. In fall, the males pair up with the females, fertilize their eggs internally, and then the eggs hatch inside of the female. And the larvae develop inside of the female over the winter time. And then in spring, she releases them into the little streams and rivulets around here. I love these guys. I'm gonna let them go. The fire salamander's body is lined with poison glands. The largest glands are behind the eyes and are called parotid glands. The poison is a milky goo which is released if pressure is put on the glands. It's a neurotoxin, which causes convulsions in any vertebrate that decides to eat a fire salamander. The yellow spots are a warning to predators that the fire salamander is poisonous. It's called aposomatic coloration. Some animals instinctively avoid the color yellow, and for those that take a taste of the fire salamander once, they're sure never to forget the terrible effects of those pretty yellow spots in the future. The fire salamander's name isn't actually derived from its yellow spots. When people in ancient Europe used to burn wood piles, these guys would come running out. So people actually thought that they were created from fire. <laughs> Silly ancient Europeaners. Fire salamanders live in broadleaf forests across Europe from Spain to Romania, usually below 3,000 feet. Being natural hiders, fire salamanders instinctively burrow into the earth and head for any hole or crevice they find when forced to be in the open. Females have been pregnant since the breeding season last autumn, and in mid-spring they give birth in small, cool, fishless streams like this. Around 50 wriggling larvae emerge, which have already hatched inside of her from eggs. For now, it's the larvae's full-time job to eat as much as possible and not be eaten by snakes, water beetles, and small mammals. They breathe with a pair of feathery external gills which they lose before metamorphosis while lungs are developing. Within four months, the larvae develop into fully toxic miniature versions of their parents. When metamorphosed, fire salamanders can grow up to eight inches and live 20 years in the wild. In captivity, they have reached an astounding 50 years old. <laughs>